and uh, that's what we're going to do for today. So I'm going to hand it off to the teacher for Hagerink problems. Um, I will be your teacher for the first half, um, and we will go over some practice problems on HackerRank. Um, give me a second to share my screen. Um, okay, so we'll be going through the string section of HackerRank. Um, and yeah, I will just... Oh. Uh, one second. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. I will share my screen again. Okay. Um, so the first one is called swap case and um, you're given task is to swap uh, cases in other words convert all lowercase case letters and vice versa um, so for example if you had um, well okay this is a good example here we have w h and r in here um, as capitalized and we make all of those lower while we make all of the lowercase letters like these into uppercase letters. So, um, I guess I'll just give you a little bit to try that out. And then uh, I'll, I'll give you guys the answer after a while. Um, okay, um, I'll over the answer to this. Um, so how I would start this, uh, this problem is I would start by having, um, uh, a, a variable, basically what our, what we're going to return at the end. And then in order to figure out what we're going to have for that string, we're going to basically check if any, if a character in the string is uppercase or lowercase, and we're going to go through every character in the string. So in order to go through every character in the string, we'll do for, um, for i in 
um, uh, for I and S, um, if dot is upper, we will add the lowercase version of it to to our final string. So we will add i dot low. And then we will also do the same if i is lower. Then we will we will check I mean we will, um the uppercase version of i into um in, into our final string. And just in case, if it is like a number or like a symbol in it, um, it wouldn't fit into either of these two. Oh, sorry, this needs to be an L if, sorry. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's a number or to upper or lowercase, then we will use um, an else statement, which will just add our original character into um, into the final string. And we all we have to do is just return our final string. Um, so I can try running this. Yeah, it works. Um, if you have any questions about this, um, feel free to ask. Um, and yeah. Okay. Uh, move on to the next. Um. Yep. And I. Let's go back in the back through. Uh, okay. I guess we'll just do this one next. Um, next one. Uh, you are given the first name and the last name of a person on two different lines. Your task is to uh, read them and print. Sorry, is this screen or? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're given the first name and the last name of a person on two different lines. Your task is to read them and hello, first name, last name. You just delved into Python. Um, so basically, if you're given, like in this sample input, if you're given Ross as the first name and then Taylor in the second as the last name, Hello, Ross Taylor. You just delved into Python. So um, I'll give you guys a little bit to do this one. Oh, and something to know is that um, 
you're not returning anything, you should be printing something. So. Okay. This is a pretty straightforward one, so I'll uh, I'll give you guys the answer for this one. Um, this one, like I said, do a print statement, not a return statement. Um, I'm pretty sure, at least. So how you would do this is, um, I mean, one one way that you could do this is using an f string. Where if you can just write, does that work? I think that works. It, a, oh, sorry, I don't, actually, it's probably better to do it the other way. Um, you can just write hello, um, and then, uh, first, and then add a, a space, and then add, add last and then um do the rest of it this should be lowercase um this should work unless i did something wrong okay and yeah, everything works. Oh, interesting. Okay, so yeah, that's the code for. It's, it's really just this. That's the code for this problem. Or like, uh, I'll leave it up for a little bit so you guys can. You got that? changes to it um yeah so hold on so yeah you want to print a given string change the character at a at a specific point in the string and then print the modified string so um yeah, you're given your string that you want to change. You're given the position that you want to change, that the position of the character that needs to be changed and the character that you'll change it to. So, um, yeah. So, give you guys like a minute or two. And also, last time we did a print statement, this one has to be written. So we're back to return statements.
Also, I want to uh, say that uh, it is going to be immutable. So if you try to change the string itself at a certain in there, I just wanted to let you guys know about that because just in case you've tried, tried it out. Boy. Okay. Um I guess I'll just quickly go over this one. Um this one So for this like I said the string is an immutable object. So we're not going to change the string, I think. So um Yep, yeah, I'll just do that. I've been told to make my screen bigger. So okay. Uh uh Okay. So what what we can do here is if we're not able to change this the if we're not able to change the string then we can put the string into a different thing and change that and then return and then change that back into a new string and then change and then return that as what we want so what we can do is we can make a list um using the list oh that thing. Um, and then at a specific um, position, which is given by our position thing, change that to make to equal character from over here. And all we would have to return is um, yeah would have to return is our um, characters. Yeah. This should work. I could be wrong. Um, okay, I thought that would work. Okay, another way that we could do this, um, sorry, I thought that that would work, but we could just do for i in string, we can just, um, make chars into a lit, uh, um, append I have to make chars equal to a list at first. Um, this should this one should work. Yeah. So what we did here, we made chars into chars, uh, short for character, to a list, which, as you know, is a beautiful thing. You're able to change it. For every character inside of our string, we appended um, the letter. So basically, if our, if our string was like apple, it would have A in the first as a zeroth value, P as the first value, P as the second value, uh, third value, and E as the fourth value. And then at the specific position that, we, that is 
you change that character by by changing it in the list instead of the string, and then we return to just the list but as a string by using the dot join cards. Um, and yeah, I'll give you. Uh, I'll leave this up for like a f like a few, um, and I'll move on in like a second. Okay, um, I will move on from this now. Um, let me just press submit code to make sure that works. Yep. Uh, okay. Next, we're find a string. So in this challenge, the user enters. Oh, sorry. I'll zoom in real quick. In this challenge, the user enters a string. string. You will have to print the number of times that the substring occurs in the given string. String traver traverse will take place from left to right, like English, and not from right to left, like some other languages. And also, they're case sensitive, so uppercase and lowercase matter. Um, so, in the sample input that we have, we check ABC, DC, DC, and then we want to check for the amount of CDCs in there. Since there's a CDC here and also a CDC here, um, the it would output two. If these, oh, yeah, if any of these are were um, the, like if this C was lowercase, then it would output one because this CDC, uppercase uppercase would not be equal to an uppercase 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 CDC. However, this one would still work. In that case, so I'll give you guys um a little bit to do this one. Also, this one is a return, not a print. So, yeah. We will go over this one now. So for this one, what we do is we would first have a count variable to keep track how many times um, the substring appears in the main string or in the first string. And then we want to use a for loop. 
in order to change a single position, whether that's the start of the substring. So for i in range of the length of our string minus the length of our string. Because if we were to if we were to go over the length, not only would it not matter because the substring can't go over the end of the regular string, it would also just give an error and it would mess up our whole code. Um, but we do have to add plus one at the end. Um, and in the for loop, um, check if the string from i to the position i plus the length of our substring so that we're checking like because the length of the substring changes so if we want to make sure that it's checking the right um by adding from going from i to the to i plus the length of the substring and then after that we just make that we just check if that's equal to the actual substring and then then our count uh, is our count goes and then at the end all we have to do is just return our count so first I'll check if this works um, it did not work that did all of this inside of here. This has to be out here. Yeah. And I'll check this. Okay, nice. So I'll leave this up for a little bit. And then um, we'll move on in a second. Okay. Um, I think we will move on now. Um, yeah. We will go to the next one. Um, so we'll do string validates. So, um, okay. Uh, in Python, a string of text can be aligned left, right, and center. So, um, there's multiple different things. There's L just, center, R just. Basically, that's just um, where the, like, which side that the, what's it, the f string is going to be at. So, your task is you're given um, some partial code that is that is used for generating the hacker rank logo, which is this uh, of variable thickness. So you all you have to do is just replace all of these underlined areas with R just, L just, or center to make it look like this. So. Um, yeah, all you have to do just R just L just center in these all of these areas, all of these blank spaces. So this is just mostly a fill in the blank, uh, rather than like making your own code. Um, and yeah, I'll give you guys a little bit to try out this one for yourself. Don't get uh, what's it? Don't. At like too overwhelmed with everything that's happening here. Just make sure you um, do all the underlined areas. And yeah, I'll give you guys a bit to do this one.
Uh, okay. Um, we will start to go over this one. Um, so for this one, like I said, it's mostly just um, next thing. So um, all we have to do is put in R just, L just, or center. Um, so for example, like you will do something like that. Um, so yeah, it's it's just centers are just, and honestly, I'll just put in, in the stuff for it, and then I'll just give you guys the thing later uh, once I'm finished. I think these are correct. I could be wrong on some stuff. Um, okay, I did do some stuff wrong. Um, so what have I done wrong, actually? Uh, I think this is wrong. This is supposed just huh? Oh, uh, it Um, okay. I don't, um, okay. I seem to have not done this correct. Um, And oh, wait, hold on.
Okay, sorry about that. Um, I got some stuff, but basically, uh, R just and L just make up the two halves of this cone, this area, this left area, uh, uh, right justified, and then the right side is to the left. Each of these are supposed to be in the center, while the the middle stripe has to be also in the center. It's positioned all the way at the right with um, this left side being um, justified to the right and the right side being justified to the left. So, um, yeah. Uh, we'll quickly move on to the next one. We'll go to text alignment. Sorry, not text alignment. Oh, okay. I must have clicked the wrong one by accident. But um, over this one, Python has a built-in string validation method for basic. It can check if a string is composed of alphabetical characters, alphanumeric characters, digits, etc. Um, so yeah. I'll since I kind of just need to go through these. Um, I'll just start coding right away. If you guys need me to go, I'll, I'll leave it up on the screen after a bit um, once I finish, but I'll, I just need to, uh, yeah. So, what we'll do here first is we'll do um, stuff for each um and a making them all equal to false that's yeah and we need to do it for basically everything that they they put in here just so that we can well okay i mean this is this is a specific task we just need to give it contains alphanumeric alphabetical digits lowercase uppercase so this as a way to check, like as a boolean of true or false, whether it has it or, or it doesn't have it, and we'll return all of them, or we'll print all of them at the end. So, okay, and then once we are done with what we will do is we will just check single um, character in our string. Um, we will check if it ha if its character is um, like each of these five, and then or sorry, it is out. And then and this will just make this equal to true. And we'll basically do that every single one of these. Um, not exactly the most elegant, but it is one good way to uh, to do it. It's uh, like it's a way that works at least. Um, So um, I'll just put all of these in. Then once we have all of these done, All we have to do is just print all of these, all of these five. So you can just print flag alnum. We'll print flag alpha. 
We'll print flag um, digit we'll flag uh, lower and then flag upper. Oops, I forgot print. Um, oh, these are supposed to be changed to true. So yeah, basically is we're making each of these, each of the five alnum alpha upper, we're making them all like um, make false at first. And then if for a character inside of our string, we have, we have like that, if the character is an alphanumeric, if it's an alphabet, it's in the alphabet, it's a digit, if it's lowercase, it's uppercase, we change those each to true. And at the end, we just print each of them separately. So I'll leave this up for like a second. Um, okay, we will move on to the next one. Next one is, um, hold on, go over designer doormat next. Um, so basically we're creating a doormat. So Mr. Vincent works at a doormat manufacturing company. One day he designed a new doormat with the following specifications. The mat size must be M times N. Um, or sorry, n times m, where n is an odd number and m is three times. So if here, if m is, or if n is seven, m is 21. If n is 11, m is 33. And the, this should have welcome in the center and it only needs dashes. I don't really know what these are called, um, like vertical lines and periods. So, for example, if you have 927, you create something like this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, to start this one, um, what I would do, create like a map. So, N and M, we just create a map. Is integers um, and our, and input dot split. This is just uh, creating the and then for I in the range of in the range of one N. All we want to do is just print out um, to print out um, and what these are doing basically what this does it goes dash lines all the way up to the period, the, uh, the vertical line. Um, yeah. And then we want to, um, sorry, yeah, we need to make that, uh, the dashes and then we want to then add the periods and the period vertical line and the period so how we would do that is just do i times that 
And then we basically just do this again because it's symmetrical. And then we want to print out um, the middle part or not. Yeah. Um, so the welcome area do that. We just have M minus seven because welcome takes seven, seven characters. Oh, sorry. I pressed the wrong button. Um, and then divide by two. So I'll also be actually outside of outside here. Um, and not. Okay. And then we want to make sure that these are dashes. And then we just want to add welcome. And then we do this again to make sure that we have the amount of dashes on the other side as well. This again, but instead of one, instead we will have n minus two. Um, negative one, negative two. Um, what is happening? Okay. Um, this needs parentheses, I just realized. Uh, these need extra parentheses. Um, okay. Uh, we can do this then if this if this doesn't work. We can just have a variable equal to this. And then just print hold on. Does that work? No, it doesn't work actually because we need to have that go. Um, I don't exactly know what's wrong here because this should be working.
Okay, I have. Oh. I didn't do these ones. Okay. Uh, I also didn't do it for these ones. Not there. Uh, sorry about that. I forgot to put parentheses on these ones as well. But yeah, what we're doing here, we're putting the amount of dashes, the correct amount of dashes, the correct, uh, these dot, vertical line dots, and these. And then we're basically doing that, but inverted afterwards on the bottom part. And then we're doing uh, the amount of dashes here, minus seven, because we need seven for the welcome. So for all test cases yep um yeah we'll do a few more um we'll go to um if you want you can i'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can look at it for a bit and we'll move on to the next one We'll go to Alphabet Rangoli. Um, look, your task is to print an Alphabet Rangoli of size N, which is basically in the middle, you start with A, then you go out one and go to B. And, you, and then, I mean, as you can see, it, every letter forms like a diamond shape. And it goes all the way to like Z, hence why the size is less than 27. Um, the input that you will be given, the size, is basically how many letters out you need to go. So I'll give you, uh, well, actually, we're running out of time, but just go over the code myself. Um, just a little complicated. Um, and we're probably going to have to split this into tabs. So, to start with this, just start it off, and also our width, which is just going to be oops. Um, so yeah, we're just setting up the width of the thing right now. And then for our upper half, we're going to, for every, um, for every number in the range of, uh, one to N, um, we are going to, oops. We're going to have the number. Um, equal to our I over here plus, uh, or sorry, times two minus one. And then for the, uh, everything in the range of L nums. Uh, L nums. I'm going to check if I is if I is or not equal to zero. So if I is not equal to zero, uh, we are going to add um, a dash, and afterwards. We are going to just write 
Um, that's a good point. I do need. So I. I need to put this part in. Um, setting up the value um, of our nums with uh, n plus n minus 1. And we're going in here by adding it to our string. And then afterwards, we will check if i is less than uh, the number of letters minus um, so that, or sorry, l minus 1, uh, but divided by 2 because, uh, there's a, because it's uh, symmetrical or it's symmetric. Uh, and if it is, then our letter value will be equal to, will go down by 1. So if it's not less than that, it's going to add the value by 1. And then, of course, we're going to the top half by in this, um, using center justification. And then uh, the bottom half is almost the exact same thing. Um, there's only one real difference with it. Um, where instead of 1 to n, we're going to go for from n uh, to z n, 0, and um, I th think this what if I messed up this time? All the way at the top. It should not be split here. This should be strip. Um, Sorry, this should be... I don't see anything wrong with this. Be working. If you tried this, um, okay, so it seems to have printed only two lines from here, and then this one, um.
gotten our L nums in here. Our letters, and then we have our string, and we have our letter values, and then we check for in the range of L nums if they're not equal. If it is not equal, then we put in a dash, and it's less than the number of letters minus one divided by two. You take away a letter value, or uh, otherwise you add a letter value, and you print it in the center. Um, this should. Oh, you know what it is? This has to be on the inter for loop. Oops, well, yeah. Um, this had to be on the inner for loop because it was only printing one line, which, uh, which made, which was because this was on the outside for loop where it only does it once. So, um, yeah. yeah I, I just had to put them on the inner for loops. Um, yeah. I'll zoom in a little bit, see if I can as much as possible in here. But yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that much time and I will have to pass it on to the... But uh, everything else that I haven't covered, okay, uh, I will... I uh, we'll just assign it as homework. Um, so for homework, you'll have to do. Yeah, we'll go back. You'll have to do it for uh, text wraps, swap case. What's your name? Which leaves you with about. Through four more to go. String lies, merge the tools and minion game. Um, and with that, I'll just hand it off to the next teacher. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm a little sick right now, so excuse me for the voice. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Um, if everyone could open up VS Code, uh, we're messing around with some uh, packages. So let me share my screen. I have to say. Um, before we start, I want to make sure that okay. because, um, for the packages we're going to use, um, we will need pip to work well. Um, so I'll also provide the uh, method to install pip. I'll put it in the question and answer. Um, this is a workaround that I found works pretty well. Uh, but yeah, that should, if you put it in right here into the terminal, and the way you open the terminal, it, you go to terminal and then new terminal right here in VS Code. And then this will open the terminal. And um, if you just copy and paste the command, it should work. Or in my case, it's already installed. So it will just display uh, that it's already installed. Uh, yeah. So it's already satisfied. Uh, so I, I guess I'll give some time for those that, uh, haven't installed it. Thank you. 
Hopefully, that was enough. Install packages with pip um, is type in the terminal, you type commands. And the reason is because pip is a, um, is a package manager and that it's used to uh, download packages that aren't provided in uh, standard libraries. So the first package we will download is the um, art package. So the way you do that in the terminal right here, you can see my um, cursor. You type pip install uh, art work. Give you some time. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you can ignore this matter. Um, but it has been successfully installed, R6.0. So what we can do now is we can use the art package. Um, so the way we do that is um, let's create, or sorry, import all the um, folders right here from our import and the asterisk. And then now we could use the tprint function. All right, and the tprint function basically turns any text into um, particular art text. So I'll just kind of show you how to use it. Let's say you want to print art, right? The word art, uh, you click run right here, this arrow. And you'll see shortly that it prints art like this. You can also do it for capitalized words. So like, let's say 10. Right. You print this. Now, uh, this word right here. So you can feel free to uh, mess some of the uh, hard text, but this is what. So that's the art package. Package. Um, we move on. Uh, the next package we will work with, I think this is my favorite, is the free games package. And uh, these games are like pretty low quality and slow, but it's still pretty fun to mess around with. Um, so what you do is in your terminal, uh, just like how we installed art, we will also install the free games package. So we type in pip install free. And then you press enter. Um, good work. Yep. It says, oh, okay. I, I guess I already downloaded it. Um, but the way you use free games is you have to type in um, this global uh, command and uh, this is because uh, this is because we want to execute it. Oh, sorry, free games. Free games. That's not a thing. Sorry. It was list all the games. I don't know why it's not working. But we could start with some that I see right here. So um, there's a paint game. Free games dot paint. Uh, huh, wait, that's weird. Oh, 
Python. So three games in Swifta. Yeah, so that works now. Um, but this should list all the games that you can play within the free games library. Uh, but yeah, we'll start with Python. Um, yeah, so make sure that when you're uh, the games package that you always type in Python free games dot and then the name of the game. Um, and you have to do this every time because each game um, isn't like it's not a script that runs automatically. Uh, by just typing in the name, you would have to type in Python slash M free games. Uh, so yeah, make sure to do this. This is the name of the game you put in place of that. So uh, we could try that one more time. Uh, free games, uh, paint. Uh, yeah, so hopefully you see this little icon over here it's called graphics basically how this works is uh it, it's yeah so what it does is it follows your cursor it's, it's not really a game but it's kind of a fun little thing you can mess around with but if you click on and then click on any other point like over here i will draw a line so i can do something like we a w or like uh, a little crown. Uh, yeah, that's it's kind of bad, but yeah. Well, that's a uh, paint. Uh, let's see what else it can find. There's also um, Pong, Python. I don't know if you've heard of the game Pong, but as always, we do Python slash M free game. And then we click or press enter. Now we could, oh, but let me try that again. Free games. Oh, if it's, oh, I don't know the can. Can you move this? Oh, yeah, I sorry, I don't know how to play this, but um, it's a game where you like bounce them. Uh, you can mess around with that. Okay, that's Pong. What else is there? This this Minesweeper. Yeah. Okay. So I lost. Yeah, that's my super. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot more uh, try out on your own time. Uh, this is the full list right here. Uh, yeah, so that's the full list, but you can also just get the, um, from typing in, uh, yeah, Python slash M space list. Right, this command will give you the, uh, list of list of three games yeah so forget the name of the game you can always type in this command and it should work and you could mess around with this in your own time uh yeah so that's free games uh what else is there yeah so moving on, yeah, hopefully you get, yeah, these two you should get down. These are 
uh, the two important commands. So I'll, I'll leave it there for like a minute. So the Wikipedia package. So as always, hit install and then Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is um, is basically like an encyclopedia website, um, and it has a like information about pretty much everything. So what we can do is we can directly import Wikipedia's libraries and use it for um, our code. So let's move on to the Wikipedia package. So if we Im we could Im import Wikipedia now, now that we've downloaded it. So uh, Wikipedia has a method called summary. And if we type in a keyword, for example, Tanzania, right? Tanzania summary, pass in the sentences equals 20 parameter. Uh, what this is doing is basically it's getting the actual um, the article you find in the website um, for, so if you go to Wikipedia and type Tanzania, the, um, the article that's displayed, it will basically pull 20 sentences from that article, right? And it will print it out, okay? So real quick, let me comment this. But we print, it's, yeah, so it prints, right, Tanzania, especially the United Republic of Tanzania. It has a lot of information. And you can do this with their key term. Just replace this string with the name of your topic. And then you could mess around with the sentence parameter. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's how to use the Wikipedia package. It's pretty useful. Uh, I'll leave it there for a minute too. Um, so yeah, so the next package we'll uh, work with is the translate package. And um, as always, we have to install the translate package. So a pip install translate. Press. Okay, so we, we successfully installed Translate. Uh, we can start translating stuff now. So the way you do that is to import the translator. So from Translate, we import uh, Translator. Uh, and here, the way you use it is you have to first initialize your translator object 
translator. And uh, you put in the parameter to lang. Right? Lang stands for language. And basically, all this is doing is setting or initializing the language. Right? So it will take uh, whatever we type in English to uh, to the desired uh, language. So in this case, uh, I'll do I'll do Spanish uh, translator. Translation equals translator. And then the way you translate it is you do translator dot translate. So you call the translate uh, method and you type in your message. So like, hello, welcome to class, to my class. Right. And then you just print the translation. All right, so we could meet the comment that. Now, if you run this, you get, yeah, that's, I believe that's correct. Uh, but we could also try that out for uh, Swahili. Uh, it doesn't, work that well for some languages so that's the only downside if we run this um i don't know if this means hello welcome to my class um yeah but it's still something you could use uh you could try it for other languages too but it works it mostly works well for uh some of the more uh more used languages especially in the united states um but yeah you can also feel free to uh switch this to whatever language you want and see what happens uh but i'll leave it at that uh yeah so if you could copy this down yeah this is part. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if you have an error, uh for like if the import doesn't work that means um pip didn't install it successfully yeah so you can try instead of doing pip install and then the package name like art uh you could try python slash m pip install and then art right so just in case that doesn't work uh, if pip install art doesn't work, you can try uh, this. Uh, adding this part does make a difference. Uh, so I'll also put that in the notes. Uh, yeah, so you try for those that haven't been able to install the packages. You can try this and see if it works. Uh, this goes for any package name. Yeah, so I'll just put that. Okay.
And then the last thing I want to show, um, you don't have to install anything because it should be built in or a built in package. So we could, um, yeah, we don't have to type in pip install anymore. But for the next thing uh, that we could use is website crawling. Now, this is a pretty uh, interesting uh, part of coding, I'd say. Uh, basically, you could get information from uh, a website. And the way it works is we have to use the URL lib dot request uh, folder and then import URL opener. Right. So this hopefully should not throw any errors if pip install hasn't been working for you because this is built in. Uh, assuming, yeah, you have the all the extensions too. Uh, but yeah, from URL lib that request import URL open. And uh, the way it works is we first have to create a file uh test.html we'll call it test.html and set it uh the right the the file mode to uh writing and basically what we're trying to do here is uh get the html uh the html code from the website and our goal here is to write it into a file this is what we're trying to do. Um, so we also have to create a page variable, um, set it equal to URL open, and then the, uh, the URL of the uh, website that you want. Yeah, I'm just typing this out by hand. Uh, yeah. So that's how you use it. And then uh content equals read so right here we just simply read the uh html file and we turn it into a string so reads html file from the website and uh turns to a string right So we store it this content variable. Uh, the next step, you simply write the content and you make sure to close the file. All right. So once again, all we're trying to do is um, obtain the HTML uh, code from the website, turn it into a string and then uh, store that information into a file, right? So if we try to run this, oh, uh, yeah, so, we can check out the HTML file that it created. Uh, but yeah, that looks about right. Uh, these are the all the tags and uh, all the information. It's basically all like pretty much everything. So yeah, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, obviously you could mess around with the methods of page.read and put some extra code to extract less data because you don't want like everything or all the information uh but yeah that's website crawling uh yeah you could see some of this uh yeah so i'll give you time to copy this down and then we'll wrap things up it's like a minute to copy this up
Right. Yeah, so someone has a question. Do you know how to install the respective code? Yeah, so that, that's just a, a, a workaround. So if pip install uh, doesn't work, then you can try that. Yeah, the, the new method. Uh, but yeah, you should know how to use it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, Normally, we do pip install and the package name, but if that doesn't work, you can try Python session pip install. I don't know if this answered your question, um, but yeah, this is just like another way to install the package. If it doesn't work, then yeah, that's it should work. This uh, man works for any other package, so uh, I don't know if there are. Let me see if I can find another package. Oh, you can just, no, oh, there's a command for that. Pip list. Okay, we can try, uh, uh, click, I don't know, click is, sure, Python. Yeah, so if you, you can always feel free to research, uh, more packages. Um, yeah, this is, all I have for today, but uh, let me just try to install that one too. Oh, okay. You can do. I don't know if it's capitalized. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Might have to update it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anyways, uh, there's a lot more packages you could download with pip and it's pip itself is a very useful package manager uh, so yeah hopefully you got that and i believe i am done me yeah hopefully you got everything down
file and stop machine here. And I believe that's it. Uh, if I could pass it on to the next teacher, I guess. Okay, um, hi again. So uh, that's going to be it for today's uh, class. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. And um, unfortunately, we didn't have time for the for more hacker rank problems, but we'll get to them next week. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and see you next time. Bye, everyone.